In this video I'm going to show you an easy beginner project on the CNC that not only looks good but sells extremely well for me. So let's get started. First thing I did is open up my browser and did an image search for garlic vector. From there I had a look for a nice black and white one that would be easy to trace and saved it. From there I went into my Vectric software and created a new project with dimensions of 360 by 110 millimeters then imported the image and did an image trace on it then removed some of the artifacts that the image trace left behind and moved it over to the left to give us some space for our text then inserted our text which is garlic bread in this case and went through a lot of fonts to try and find one that would look nice with this project. Eventually when I settled on a font that looked good, I went ahead and increased the spacing between the characters so that the wood between the characters won't break out so easily when we do our V-carve. Then just moved everything to the correct positions before realizing that I'd have to change the orientation because of the clamping system on my homemade CNC. So I changed the X and Y dimensions in the project settings and then grouped everything together and did a 90 degree rotation on all the vectors. Then centered everything back up. In case you were wondering about the rectangle that I've got that's just a bit bigger than our material size, that I used to create a tool path to get the board perfectly flat after it's been clamped down on our bed. I then went ahead and created a V-carved toolpath for our image as well as a V-carved toolpath for our text. Both of them using the exact same bit so when it comes to the G-code and actually cutting it out we don't need to do a tool change in between. After looking at the preview I made a couple of minor adjustments until I was happy with it and then went ahead and saved the g-code. Then after opening up UGS and getting it connected with the CNC I did the usual homing sequence and then opened up our first g-code file that we are going to run which is our board flattening toolpath. For this I used a 22 millimeter straight router bit which is the largest bit that I've got available at the moment. So I zeroed out my z-axis to the highest point of the material and let the program run. Now this toolpath is only cutting out 0.5 millimeters at a time so every time it finished I had to drop the z-axis with 0.5 millimeters, re-zero it and then repeat the program again which I did a couple of times before the board was perfectly flat. After being happy that the board was nice and level I opened up the g-code files for our v-carve toolpaths, did a tool change to our 9.5 millimeter v-bit and did the usual z-axis zero before starting to cut. For this toolpath I rather went with a couple of shallower cuts instead of one deep cut um, just to get a bit better finish you know straight off the CNC makes the cleaning up a bit easier and even doing that uh, this toolpath still finished up in under 10 minutes after it was done I just cleaned up some of the sawdust with the shop vac and then went ahead and stained the inside of the carved bits with a bit of oak stain now I found that gel stain works quite well for this as it gives me minimal bleeding and it's got a very nice consistency so it's easy to apply with a small paintbrush. And another good thing about using the gel stain is that even if you do mess on your project it doesn't soak in so deep so it's actually quite easy to clean up with a bit of sanding. Then it was time to add the handles and in my opinion this is what makes all the difference and makes it one of the more popular items at the flea market. After centering everything up and marking where the holes must go with an awl, it's off to the drill press 
to drill the four holes for our hardware. Now one tip I can give you here, especially with pine, is to use a piece of off cut um, on the back of your plank when you drill the holes, just to minimize the amount of tear out that you get from the drilling. Then after drilling the four holes, I uh, swapped out to a countersink bit and just countersank the holes on the back of the board. And then it was time for assembly. To be honest with you, these sell well as is, but to sell double the amount of them, it's good to offer your customers a personalized option where you just add their name to it, where it will say Jen's breadboard or John's breadboard. And that amounts to probably about half of my sales. But I also do charge them a little bit extra to do it, so it also makes it a bit more profitable. If you like this video, please subscribe and let me know in the comments if there's anything else that you'd like me to cover in upcoming videos.